All right. It starts off with Luffy trying to climb the tower that Gold D. Roger was executed on. He's like, I want to see what the King of the Pirates saw before he died. And that's what Smoker shows up. Gotcha, bitch. He remembered that Luffy asked him where the town center was. So he basically just guessed, hey, he's going to be right here. And Smoker tells him, if you want to go to the Grand Line, you got to get through me first, little bitch. And Luffy's like, all right, then let's get it then. I'm about to fuck your shit up, baby boy. But he gets stuck like a goofball. He gets his legs tangled up in the tower. And that's when Smoker's like, get your punk ass down here. And that's when Luffy gets free and he tries to throw a punch. <laughs> But he misses. And that's when Smoker throws a mean ass combo, lands it on him. Beep, beep. He starts fucking that boy up, man. Smoker ain't nothing to be played with, the baby. And Luffy tries to do his gum gum whip, but he misses. And he wraps around a water fountain, and that shit just fucking slings his ass in the air. Just <laughs> Bye, Luffy. Even Sanji sees his ass flying around through the air. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? And that's when they show the Beast Tamer from Buggy's crew. He also sees Luffy as well. And that's when he runs and tells Buggy, Hey, yo, this motherfucker on the island, baby. And, you know, Buggy's on the island looking for his flashily revenge. He's trying to get back at Luffy for beating his ass at Orange Town. You know what I'm saying? He's like, I need to get this son of a little bitch. Where's this stupid little bitch at? That's when Luffy crashes. Pow! And when he lands, he's like, you know what? It's time for me to take a nap. And he just dozes off. We'll see you in a bit, Luffy. It shows Zoro following Toshigi into a marine building. And Toshigi is like, mop up, bitch. It's time to mop up. You want to repay me for my glasses? Time to mop up. Even Nami. Nami's like in the alleyway and she sees Zoro. And she's like, what the fuck is going on? Zoro's a marine? What is going on? Where's the whole crew at? Get used to it, Nami. That's what the straw has to do, baby. No, but Zoro really doesn't struggle mopping because he does that three mop style like a badass. Way to go, Zoro. Round of applause. <laughs> As he's mopping, two Marines appear out of nowhere and they try to arrest him. They're like, oh, Zoro, what the fuck you doing here? You know what I'm saying? We're going to arrest you. What the hell are you doing in this building? Let me tell you guys, that's a bad move, puppy. That's a bad move. You should have just kept it pushing, stupid. After he didn't clean those boys up too. Ha <laughs> ha You guys got washed. He leaves Toshigi a little stack right there, money, you know, to repair for her glasses. Bro takes off, and as he's walking, he finds another sword shop in the city. He's like, he's still trying to get his swords, you know what I'm saying? He only got one. And Zoro walks in and tells the shopkeeper, yo, I'm low on berries, my nig. Like, I need to buy two swords, you feel me? Like, what What can you do for me? And the shop owner's like, yeah, you broke-ass nigga, bro. But that's what he notices, his sword. He's like, oh, shit! Damn near creams his pants. Oh! Little Weasley bastard. And he tries to buy it off Zoro. He tries to lowball him and shit. But Zoro's like, what? I ain't selling you this shit, little bitch. It's my sword, bro. And remember, that's, that sword was Kawina's personal sword. You know what I'm saying? That's why Zoro's like, nah, bro, piss the fuck off. You ain't getting this sword off me, bro. But let me get a couple swords off of you, though. Kawina runs in the shop. Tashiki, bro. Oh, my bad. It's the same thing. Fuck. And, you know, she's not too bright. She assumed that somebody attacked the two Marines and kidnapped Zoro. She notices Zoro's sword also. She's like, oh shit, that's the Wado Ichimanji, a legendary. Say it one more time. Legendary sword. And Zoro starts looking through the shop for some swords, you know. You know, as Tashigi's giving a speech about how she wants to collect all the legendary swords from every criminal that has them, blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares, Tashigi. You ain't gonna collect shit. I'm just kidding, Tashigs. Do your thing, girl. As Zoro is looking through the sword collection, he spots one. Mm, okay. Toshigi tells him that's the Kitetsu the third. Another legendary sword. Say it one more time. Legendary. 
and the shop owner says he can't sell it. And before he could finish his sentence, Zoro says it's cursed. And the shop owner's like, how do you know? And that's what Zoro's like, I just do, bro. I'm sick with it. The shop owner says that all the Kitetsus are cursed. And Zoro's like, bitch, I'll take it. Like bitch Give me this shit, bitch. I'm from the street. I need that. Baby. You think I'm a little bitch? Do I look like a little bitch that's afraid of a little sword? Give me that sword. Huh? And that's when he says, like, how about we find out what's stronger? The sword's curse or my good luck? And let me tell you guys something. This is a legendary moment. This is one of my favorite moments, bro. Zoro just flings that bitch up in the air. He sticks his arm out. And the rest is pure one piece badass history, bro. Let me just keep it simple. That boy walks out the shop with two arms. All right, need I say more? You really don't. All right, then let's keep it going. That's when the shop owner runs in the back and grabs another sword named the Yubashiri and tells Zoro, hey, yo, you can have this shit, bro. You're a badass and you're a real swordsman. That's when Zoro leaves the shop and they show Tashiki. She's like, who is that guy? Hey, yo, baby girl, you caught the vapors, huh? You love little Zoro. We all do. We all love us some Zoro. You know what I'm saying? Get used to it. You feel me? That boy smooth with it. It shows Buggy and Luffy, and they damn near have a close call by crossing paths, but you know, they're a couple of dipshits. It's a real funny moment. Very funny stuff, guys. Good job. As soon as Buggy sees Luffy, he's already taken off. He's dipping. Pew! <laughs> ah, a bunch of dummies. It cuts back to Smoker in his office. And he pays a local bounty hunter named Daddy, one of the Marines, best snipers. But he's extra sick with it with the blickies, you know. Boom, he's extra sick with it. But he only hunts small time folk because he has a daughter. He doesn't want to go after the real G's, you feel me? But I get it, you know, get that bag, Papa. Luffy runs into Zoro checking out his new sword. He's like, ooh. Cuts back to Usopp shopping for goggles. Uso was about to buy him. He's like, oh shit, I forgot my wallet outside. So he runs and go and gets it. But then the little girl walks in the store and buys the goggles right before him. And he gets fucking pissed. He's like, Those are mine. And he gets into an argument with the little girl, right? And Uso runs his mouth. Hey, yo, I got a bounty of three million fucking berries. My captain is Luffy. Give me them goddamn glasses, little girl. And she's like, nah, little bitch. That's when the little girl runs off to her dad and she tells him like, yo, that guy was bothering me. Go whoop his ass. And he also has a bounty on him. And then the guy approaches him. Hey, you messing with my daughter? And that's when Usopp runs his mouth again. He's like, bro, my captain, he's a savage, bro. Better skedaddle before I beat that ass, boy. <laughs> Oh, hella stupid, man. And uh, daddy's like, all right. Since remember, since daddy's a little small time and you don't want to mess with the big criminals, he's like, all right, bro. I'm going to take off. And that's when Usopp's, all right, I'm going to try to flex some more on this little motherfucker, bro. And he's like, give me those goggles, too, while you're at it. And daddy's like, ah, bro. See, now you done fucked up, papa. My daughter got me these. And he does some Yu-Gi-Oh shit. It's time to do 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 Motherfucker. Let's duel, baby. They show Nami and she hears the news that somebody's dueling daddy. She hears a crowd form and she's like, what kind of fucking idiot will duel daddy? This dude's never lost a duel in his life. What kind of idiot? And she's like, oh. She sees Usopp. She's like, oh, that kind of idiot. And that's when they show Usopp and daddy dueling. They take 10 paces, right? And before the last pace where they turn around and pop off, you know, Usopp's like, you know what? I really don't want to kill this bastard in front of his daughter. You know what I'm saying? So he does a smoke bomb. <laughs> That's when daddy shoots the gun right out of his hands. Pop! They end up talking and Usopp tells him his name. Daddy asks him, do you know a guy called Yasop? And Usopp's like, yeah, that's my pops, baby. That motherfucker left me when I was a little baby. That motherfucker left me when I was a little baby. And he tells Usopp, 
that his father spared him after a duel they had. And the reason why he spared him is because Yasop found out that he had a daughter. I love this scene, man. This is where Yasop tells daddy that he left Usopp when he was younger, you know. He loved Usopp, but he loved one thing more, and that was the sea. <laughs> you a gangster, Yasop. <laughs> you a terrible father, though, motherfucker. Usopp tells him that they should do it one more time to the death. And daddy's like, all right, you have to hit that weather vane over there. And that's when he points a gun at him. And let me point out something, guys. The weather vane is a whale with a crown on it. You feel me? And there's a lot of theories about the One Piece and whales and stuff like that. And I thought it was really funny that they put a whale with a crown. If you look at all the drawings that Oda does, Oda loves... Oda loves to mention whales when he's talking about the One Piece for some reason. And I think the One Piece has a lot to do with whales. And that's where Usopp concentrates, right? And then he fires, bow! And at first it looks like he misses and Nami's like, oh shit. But in fact, he shoots the bullet right through the fucking crown, man. On some G shit. Fuck. And that's when daddy tells him, bro, you're as good as your old man, man. And if you want to meet up with your pops, you should go to the Grand Line because that's where you'll find him. That's when he takes off. It's a, tr it's a real cool moment for Usopp. And they show Sanji, he gets challenged out of nowhere by a female chef called Carmen. They show Buggy and Luffy almost cross paths again. And that's when they show Sanji back at the market scene. And guys, check this out. This is an important foreshadowing scene. And to me, at least, it reminds me of a scene that you see in the Water 7 arc with Sanji way further down the line. But I honestly think it's foreshadowing the all blue. And remember, Oda, you know, during the beginning stages of One Piece, he crammed in a lot of information about, you know, what the One Piece is and everything. He, when Oda was writing One Piece, he thought it was going to end way sooner than it, than it is. So there's a lot of information in the early arts. And this scene, I think, is one of them. But Sanji's at the marketplace and he notices all the unique fish, right? And a man from the market calls them coastal fish from the West Blue. And Sanji's like, why do you guys call them coastal fish? And the man tells him, because all the crossing ocean currents, it brings all the fishes from all the other blues to Locktown. It's the perfect place. And that's when a crowd forms and Sanji and the market man run over and see that the local fishermen brought in a rare elephant bluefin tuna fish. And Sanji trips out because he used to read about fish like this, right? He used to read about fish like that in the East Blue on the Baratie. And that's when Sanji tries to buy the fish and they tell him, nah, man, we can't sell it. It's a prize in this upcoming contest we have tonight. And it's the same contest where the female chef challenged him to. So the Logtown Cooking Championship begins, right? And that's when Sanji runs into Usopp and Nami in the crowd. And he tells them, hey, yo, you guys, I'm trying to win this fish, man. Of course, the final round comes down to Sanji and Carmen, right? And they both get the whipping. Let them cook. Sanji serves up his plate. Carmen serves up her plate. And that's when they show Sanji right there. Like, I know I won. And Sanji will never hit a woman, guys. Round of applause for being a true gentleman. And he'll slap the shit out of the chick in a food cooking contest. He'll slap the shit out of anybody. I don't care if you're a man, woman, child. Your ass is done for. Sanji whooping that ass. And you already know who wins. As they're walking away from the contest, there's another important scene, guys. Nami notices something in the air. She notices that it's going to rain soon. You know, Nami is superb at it weather and navigation right she could just tell in the air so it cuts back to luffy and zoro and coincidentally a gust of wind takes luffy's straw hat and it just sweeps it there's so much foreshadowing in this arc man i swear there's so much foreshadowing and that's when luffy chases after this like, oh shit my straw hat and he splits up with zoro and where does the straw hat coincidentally lands 
It lands right in front of the tower where Gold Roger was executed. Buggy he and Smoke get word that Luffy's in the main square. Buggy has got a couple men watching the main square. And of course, Smoker is waiting for him too. He's got he's got men watching the main square as well. Luffy climbs the main platform, and as he's standing there, a lady approaches him. And then Buggy shows up, and it's revealed that this lady is Alvida. You guys remember Alvida, the hefty pirate queen from the Romance Dawn arc? You know, big baby mama. You know, big girl. You know. And she says that she ate the devil fruit called the smooth, smooth fruit. And as Luffy is talking to Buggy. Kabaji traps him, bap, in one of those, you know, that guillotine trapper thing. And they show storm clouds forming up. Nami's tripping out. She's like, oh shit, something's going down, guys. And that's when Zoro runs into Nami and them. And he tells them like, hey, yo, I got a bad feeling that something's gonna happen. Even he knows, something's, something's going down, guys. Something's going down, like, period. Smoker and Tashigi watch from a balcony as Luffy's about to flashily be executed, you know what I mean? So, Smoker tells his boys, yeah, hey, yo, go surround their ship, go surround the main square, I'm gonna let Buggy chop off Luffy's head, and then we'll come over and we'll take Buggy. We're gonna let them kill each other, and then we'll swoop in, right? As Buggy is about to execute Luffy, he asks, hey, you got any last words? Before I kill you, you little bitch? Luffy just shouts, listen! I'm the man that's gonna be king of the pirates, you stupid little bitch. Sanji and Zoro show up, and they try to attempt to free Luffy. And that's when Buggy gets ready to cut off Luffy's head, right? And Luffy just looks at Zoro and Sanji, and he goes, Guys, sorry, but I'm dead. And then he just smiles. <laughs> ah! And... Buggy gets ready to chop his head off, and right before the blade hits, a fucking ginormous thunderbolt just strikes the tower. And that's when Smoker orders all the Marines to surround him and tag. And Luffy and Zoro get the fuck up out of the You know what I mean? The, th the bolt doesn't even hit Luffy, and even if he did, he's rubber. It doesn't do jack shit to him, but it fucks Buggy up, period. And that's when they show Smoker, and he's just tripping out like... He smiled just like Gold Roger did, right? And he's also tripping out. He's like, he, he noticing, he's just like Nami. He's noticing all the winds, right? He's noticing that the winds are going to the west, the exact direction that the Straw Hats want to go. And he goes like, he's tripping out. He's like, that's a tailwind. You know, basically a giant boost for the Straw Hats to go in the direction they want to go. Like, the winds and the weather is in the Straw Hat's favor at this moment. There's a whole bunch of strange ass coincidences happening. You know what I mean? They show smoke. He whoops Buggy and Alvida and his whole fucking crew up real quick. He just wraps them up and he just gets done with them. You know what I'm saying? He's a low gear fruit user. You can't do shit to him if you don't have hockey. You know? And as Nami and Usopp run back to the Going Merry, they encounter Moji and Richie, the lion. And you know, Usopp distracts Richie. It cuts back to Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji running back. And in the middle of the road, Tashiki is blocking them. And that's when she challenges Zoro for a sword. She's all mad and shit. Oh, you're a criminal. You're a bounty hunter. You don't need that sword. Blah, blah, fucking blah. And Zoro's like, come get it then, little baby. And let me put, let me make this quick, guys. Like, Tashiki is no Kuina. She loses. Zoro pins her. And he's like, you'll never get this sword from me. Ah, I love that scene, bro. You look wicked, Zoro. And that's when Zoro's like, all right, gotta go. You know what I'm saying? It was a quick little fight. Queenie didn't have a chance. Sanji and Luffy run up ahead. And up ahead, they see Smoker blocking them. And that's when Smoker's like, hey, I told you, bro. If you wanted to go to the fucking Grand Line, you have to get through me, baby. Round two, you ready to get this shit? And that's when Luffy tells Sanji, Me skedaddle. I got this. I'm about to... Not really though. You really ain't, bro. You really ain't. It cuts back to Nami and Usopp. And they jump on the Gong Mary. You know what I'm saying? The Marines show up and they, they start popping shots at Moji. So they're so they're able to jump on the Gong Mary. They take off. And that's when Usopp like, hey yo, what about the others? And Nami's like, we we'll pick them up, Shosanji running. Nami! And Nami asks him, like, hey, where are the other guys? And he goes, who cares? 
We'll get them later. The Marines surround Sanji. And Usopp jumps in the water to help Sanji. He just starts blicking off. Pink, 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 pink. Trying to help his boy out, you know what I'm saying? Well, Smoker and Luffy getting ready to fight. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, you guys, Luffy takes a fat L in this one, man. Smoker serves up Luffy real quick. The whole fucking fight. Luffy, he couldn't hit Smoke, man. Smoke, Smoker's devil fruit allows his body to turn into smoke, right? And it makes his body intangible. And Smoker just serving that kid up. <laughs> and that's when Smoker picks Luffy up. He goes up in the air and he just slams his fucking ass. <laughs> and that's when Smoker reaches for his staff. He's about to end Luffy's shit. And all of a sudden, somebody from behind him stops him and grabs his hand. And Smoker's like, oh, <laughs> it's you. As now the government can have your head. You ain't gonna catch him, Smoker. Shit. You ain't gonna do shit to this dude. I promise you that. This guy says one sentence. He says, the world is still waiting its answer. And I swear to God, a fucking ginormous green whirlwind just, I like, it sweeps the whole fucking town up, bro. Into this giant tornado. Like, it sweeps up every fucking body. Everybody. Every, nobody in this town has a damn chance. Fucking, like, just takes everything out period so luffy zoro and sanji all end up at the port somehow like everything is working in their favor right now divine intervention right and that's when they see nami just taking off and luffy's like, all right you guys ready to go man it's time to do what i gotta do let's get it and luffy fucking just slings himself and the boys back to the going merry just <laughs> smoker watches them sail away and they show the man in the green Standing right there in that same podium. And he says, go. If that's what you want, then by all means, make it happen. And Smoker looks at this guy and he goes, hey, why did you help that man, Dragon? Dragon tells him, it's not our place to come between that man and his chosen path, Smoker. Smoker tells Tashiki and all his men, let's go after Luffy. Why you didn't go after Dragon right there, Smoker? Huh? Why you didn't go after that guy right there? But he no goddamn well he wasn't gonna do shit to this man. Once you find out who this man is, you are gonna say the same thing. There's a reason why Smoker's like, I'll go after Luffy, that kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, he knew better than that. <laughs> he knew better than that, bro. He, how you gonna act like Dragon's not right there in front of you? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I always loved that part. He's like, I don't see no dragon. And as the straw had to sail in the way, I'm telling you this Log Town Arc guys has so many legendary moments and another one occurs, right? The straw had celebrate being close to the Grand Line and they are almost there, guys. Sanji puts his foot in the barrel and he says, I'm going to the Grand Line to find the all blue. And Luffy puts his foot on the barrel and he says, He's going to become the king of the pirates. Zoro puts his, and he says he's going to become the world's greatest swordsman. Nami puts hers, and she says she's going to the Grand Line so she can draw a map of the entire world. And Usopp puts his, and he says, I'm going to be a god. Off to the Grand Line, baby. Reverse mountain, here we come. Let's get it.